I'm talking about a full color, a human sized U, straight from plastic. No painting, no manual color work. Just click, print, clone. Are, are we already there? Well, I, I can burst part of that bubble right now. Full color? I don't think so. It's not happening, not in this video. But I did get my hands on the Creality Raptor and a Prusa XL with five tool heads, meaning five colors. That could work. There were a ridiculous amount of problems just creating this little guy and we are making a full-sized version and I will cover all the problems that I had later on in this video. This is the Creality Raptor, a handheld blue laser that I've had for a while and hopefully the first piece of this puzzle. You see, I've already done some jobs with it. I did a frog, I did braking pads, all with the blue laser. It's interesting because there were items where the blue laser just said, no, I'm not gonna scan it whatsoever. It could be too shiny or even too dark so that the blue laser light doesn't scatter back to the sensor. You also have to add all these markers to everything which can be a little annoying. So, And there is a way to just skip all of this and that's to use the infrared mode, marker free and Honestly, I just found it way easier to work with, so that's what I ended up using most of the time. The Prusa XL has five separate individual extruders, way different than the K2 Plus and Bamboo Lab with the AMS and CFS system that I reviewed earlier this year. A color change on the AMS, two minutes. A color change on the XL, 12, 12 seconds. When printing your head with 1500 tool, I'm not kidding, 1500 tool changes. That time adds up real quick. <laughs> so I started a simple face scan and, and Lina would see everything live through the phone. Yeah, awesome feature that came in clutch so many times. I mean, even with a laptop, it's easy to end up like this guy. You have a light on the scanner that guides you whether you're at the right distance, but sometimes it would just freeze up completely. Not knowing where it is, you would have to go back to a point where it could begin to recognize it again. Clearly it has a hard time with, with hair. The hair it did catch did turn out pretty well, although my facial hair turned out just making it worse. The software, not, not bad. It doesn't have much settings to mess up and you basically just have to remove the islands that may have formed and the software will clean up and close pretty much any gaps. Next up, we head over to Prusa Slicer and start painting. It, it can be a little tricky. The imperfections really do show up if you have been a little quick with the paint and it's spilled over to another color. Unfortunately, you're still limited to five colors, so the eyes will have to be done separately. Okay, jumping straight into this being printed, I'll show more of the filaments later in the video. This includes about 600 tool changes, 1% infill with two parameters. It checks out, skin color completely wrong, lip color even worse. I had to do something about it, so I did actually add some paint. The hair I, I think looks awesome. I, I think historically that's been something with 3D scanning where it's really been a weakness. But this looks great, except on the top where it couldn't scan it. Even the sweater, it's the same one I'm wearing, has really clear patterns. It's just turned out really great. A lot of imperfections, a lot of gunk from the tool changes in the hair. You can see the scanning of the eyes didn't turn out great either. And you can clearly see how the facial hair has created bumps all over the mouth. Considering I took it straight off the printer and this is the result, pretty darn cool. If we're 3D scanning a whole person, we must build a turntable, right? Bullshit. This was a complete waste of time. You don't need a turntable to print the full body anyways. My original idea was to have a turntable and then a vertical axis that the 3D scanner would uh, just go up and down continually as I rotated and that way I could 3D scan myself on my own. Turns out it doesn't work. You angle the scanner all the time trying to get into all the crevices of the body and having a scanner just going up and down like that wouldn't result in a good scan. So I kind of dropped that idea and still built the turntable, disassembled it, and now we're building it because someone out there might find it useful. Initially, I figured, hey, this power drill is pretty strong. It could probably turn me around, you know, easy piece of lemon squeezy. I was way off. I needed a six to one gear reducer coupled with a four to one gear ratio in order to actually have a smooth rotation. It won't win any beauty contests, but it should work. It's just a gear reducer together with a frame. The reason it's so tall is so that the power drill can fit onto the shaft underneath the gear reducer. I only had two of these wheels at home, so I had to 3D print my own. 
a 3D printed adapter going on to three bearings and a sherry on top. And wow, that fits perfectly. It's almost as if I built it, disassembled it and then built it again. And now the even larger sherry on top. Here we go. Okay, I could finally do the full body scan. In the software, they do have an option for this, which worked really well. There was a lot of spinning, probably unnecessary. But the scan was coming together surprisingly quickly too. What takes time is getting into the areas that are not so easily scanned. A rough scan you could probably have ready within a couple of minutes. The post process, you can see me remove these islands. I'm, I'm cleaning up the hands. Definitely keep them in your pockets, not floating like I did here. A solid 30 minutes later, it's finished. And it looks fantastic. It really does. The amount of detail around the ears, the hat, the face overall, everything looks absolutely picture perfect. Except I would say my hand and that was probably my own fault moving it. Now that's the only thing that didn't turn out fantastic. Everything else is just incredible detail. I've never seen anything like it. Holy shit. Cap color? Check. I don't know, it's hard to say. I think this would, not again. I think this one called Woodfield Chocolate Brown is closest to my hair, so we'll go with that. I don't know, maybe a little light, but that's all I have, so that's gotta do. White for the eyes. For sure, this is gonna be the toughest color. I need some pinkish color for the lips and also a little in my eye. And the only thing I have is orange. I think this one, it's not too far off, but man. I got this red and orange, not even close. I'm just gonna have to pick one of these and I'm thinking this one. Unloading and loading five extruders, it, it's just fast enough that it doesn't make sense to go anywhere, but total time, 13 minutes, insane. It tells me it should take one day and 17 hours. We'll see if that's true. We are 24 hours into this, nothing wrong with the machine at all. A lot of wrong with me. I thought I had PLA. Turns out this blue cap color, turns out it was PETG. And PETG needs a lot higher temperature, which is why it looks like this. You can see how, well, the blue filament doesn't stick. So what do you do? Well, you go into the settings and increase the temperature, of course. And that's what I've done. At least what I've been trying to do, tune it, nozzle one temperature and try to increase it and it looks like it's working but it's not i can go in again and the temperature just doesn't stick it changes with every swap that it does which is just did so now the temperature goes down again which is the problem so i can't do anything about it i can't send any commands or anything like this so i'm going to change the color to a proper pla because that's the only thing that can solve this. It's not the exact same color. It's just gonna have to do. Yeah, there you go. Pet G, Schalke Blue, and it should even be 250 degrees. So that's why it didn't work. And instead we're doing PLA, 215 degrees. But you see the obvious difference in color. Okay, a short break in the video to let you know about PCBWay. Mainly I've used their CNC and 3D printing service as you probably have seen in a lot of my videos. Stainless steel adapters, motor mounts, even propellers. All you have to do is upload your file and it will provide you with materials to choose from. PCBWay also offers PCB manufacturing, it's in their name. And with their instant quote feature, you will get the pricing up front, which is really appreciated. PCBWay made stainless steel motor mounts for this drone, so check them out in the description below to see what parts they can make for you. Within a few layers, it should be able to bridge it. So, fingers crossed. Actually, it did a fantastic job. Look at this. Okay, back to the GoPro. Each piece took around 15 hours to print, mostly 1% infill, two parameters. The head though, yeah, that, that one was cursed, filament jams, the extruder crashing mid-print, total chaos. The front actually came out decent, but when the print paused and didn't reset perfectly, it left some pretty nasty defects. I stumbled upon the problem of diagonally the hips and, and shoulders, it just wouldn't fit, so I didn't have much of a choice other than to split it just down the middle. I did all the plane cuts and making it solid in Fusion, but now in hindsight, I would totally recommend Mesh Mixer, that will save you from going bald. Over the next few days, the printers were running non-stop, cranking out parts like a machine on a mission. Some of these parts were almost as big as the printer 
Razer could physically handle. And after all that, all 15 multicolor parts were finally done. That's it, I'll use super glue to glue all these parts together and we'll see how close we came of the idea of scanning, clicking print, having a clone. Okay, you guys be the judge. I know it can't be too bad because every time I open the garage door, I get a little jitter. My long lost twin brother. What's the verdict? I think it turned out decent overall. The eyes are 3D printed, you guys. The cap color is unfortunate. The skin color is pretty off. The seams could definitely be improved, but that was not the goal of the video. The goal of the video was to see how far we could take this using only 3D printing. Fun fact, the amount of waste material this guy produced was 400 grams. Keep in mind, when I tested the K2 and the Bamboo Lab with the AMS and CFS system, the amount of waste material for a Benchy, just 12 grams, was more than 100 grams of waste material, which... Okay, thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Bye guys!